Hello, and welcome to Social Workers Rise, where we inspire social workers to connect, expand their knowledge, and change more lives than they ever thought possible. We will talk everything social work on every level from micro to macro. We are going to hear stories of social workers who are doing big things, learn new skills, and most importantly, give you actionable steps to make a difference today. Let's go. Hello and welcome to another episode of Social Workers Rise. It is your host, Catherine here. Today, we're going to be shining a light on the dark side of social work with poor documentation. Essentially, what happens if we are skimping on our documentation, if we're not getting it done, if we forget key points that happen during the visit? If we are just kind of half-assing it and not including what we actually need to be including. So this is going to be short and sweet. But just to start off, just do your documentation. (laughs) Just do it, okay? I know it sucks. I know that it's not very easy. But go back to last week. I gave you some documentation hacks, some time-saving hacks that you can use. So hopefully that would be helpful for you. And that's going to be episode 153, Documentation Hacks. So just go back there and check that out. But we're going to talk about what can happen if we don't document. First, there are a lot of legal and ethical issues that can come up for you in your career and with your license, right? Let's take, for example, a risk of if our client says that they have considered self-harm or suicide or maybe they started maybe they started cutting or they have really really seriously contemplated suicide you need to be sure that you have documented your due diligence when somebody has told you this it is very very important that your documentation is on point because if you fail to do this and God forbid something happens to them or they die, they're definitely going to be looking at your notes. And you want to make sure that your notes were in on time, in a timely manner, like 24 to 48 hours, preferably right after the visit. And you want to make sure you've covered your P's and Q's in there because we are bound by all of these laws that say, hey, we need to be taking steps to protect our clients. And if your documentation doesn't show that, you could be in really big trouble, my friend. And I don't want that for you. So just remember, if you didn't document it, it didn't happen, no matter what you say. So make sure that you document your interventions and what you do. By the way, I forgot to mention when we first started, if you need support around how specifically to document, what to include, all of the nitty gritty. It is not this episode. You need a course on that. And I definitely recommend the clinical essentials for the future therapist course. The link is in the show notes. This will walk you through exactly how to do a proper biopsychosocial assessment, how to document interventions, give you cheat sheets to make this faster and more efficient, to put your interventions into words that sound professional. So if you want the nitty gritty on how to do this, how to document suicide and self-harm and all of the things I'm about to talk about, definitely, definitely check out that course. Okay. Next, I want you to consider if somebody has reported potential abuse or neglect. Again, you have to document that you did all of the steps you take that you called to consult or to make a report. Because again, if something happens, that's going to come back on you and you do not want to make it seem like you're slacking and that you have not fulfilled your professional responsibilities. This is going to get you fired at best, right? Fired at best. Uh, You could have your license revoked. You can get a whole lot of trouble. So again, just make sure that you do this. So 
so far. You can get into legal ethical issues. You can have your license revoked. You can, again, it'll it'll really set a poor precedent for your work ethic too, because your colleagues are going to remember this. Your boss is going to remember this. And social work is not a very big field. It is small. And you are bound to run into each other. So if you have a poor work ethic, you're slacking on this documentation, it could become really, really difficult to find a job. So just putting that out there. Next, if we don't com- if we don't document right, it could lead to compromised client care. For example, if I have a client and you come in to cover me, but my documentation is like bare bones and it doesn't really tell you anything, you're going to have a really, really hard time resuming care with that client because you don't know what has happened recently and you don't know what's coming up next and you don't know where you need to pick up off, pick, pick up at. So it's going to compromise that client care. And to be honest, it's probably going to piss off your client too, because they're just trying to get help with their issue. And here they are having to tell the same freaking story to you yet. It may be like yet another social worker, right? So if I would have just made sure that my document was was where it needed to be, then that could have avoided the whole thing. And it wouldn't have compromised that client's care. It wouldn't be adding more stress to our clients. And we don't want that. They're going through enough already. We want to make this process as simple as possible because these we, we all know these systems are broken. We do not need to be adding any more stress to our clients, right? Um, it can actually, if we don't have good documentation, it can actually shut down the funding, the funding and resources for our program. So for example, when I was hosting a community grief support group at a local nonprofit, they wanted to see proof of attendance and documentation and the issues that we discussed because they needed to be able to justify us using their space and using their materials for the time that we needed it, right? They, we needed to be able to show, hey, we're actually making a difference here and we're actually helping people. So please do not take our room away. Please do not, you know, reduce the funding or the resources. So if, if you're not documenting, it can have a really, really macro impact on your clients, on the agency, on everything. So just make sure you're doing your stuff, right? Also too, it could have professional consequences. So when I was working in hospice and the hospital, we would often have our notes audited by, to be honest, I don't even know who they were, but their job was to audit our notes. And if they did not show the need for the patient to be on our services, so what they call medical necessity, we could be charged for fraud. That is huge. And that is not something that you want to be, you know, the the person to get your company charged with fraud or worse, that you're charged with fraud or that there's any kind of medical neglect going on, right? Because if you say, oh, client is charged, but you don't provide any kind of circumstances or any further details around the the reason for discharge, it could be seen as neglect. And that is not good either. Not good, my friend. So the last one that I'm going to leave you with is I had a client who I was doing home visits with and man, I did a lot of freaking home visits with them. I did phone calls. It was a lot. And at the end of their services, they said, and I never saw my social worker. My social worker didn't do anything to help me. Oh my goodness. You know what? The only thing that saved me, literally the only thing that saved me were my notes. Because every single time I picked up my phone with them calling me, every single time I drove down there, I documented that. And my boss was able to see, okay, My social worker has been giving you above standard care and above standard attention that you're just a liar. So make sure that you're really putting in there, you know, what you do and everything because your job may actually depend on it. 
So I hope that it's helpful. Again, if you need more on the specifics around documentation, like what do I include in my notes? How do I structure it? What are the ways that organizations expect me to document? I highly encourage you to get additional training because while I agree, yes, you should have learned this in school, not all of us got the same education, right? Because there's different internships, different professors, different supervisors, and nobody, it's very likely that nobody has sat down with you and said, this is how you actually do documentation legally and ethically, right? And if that hasn't happened for you, then you need to make this happen, right? It's not your fault, but it is your responsibility. So the link is there in the show notes. The course is called the Clinical Essentials for the Future Therapist. It is worth the investment. I give you step-by-step how to do these assessments. I give you tools and resources to speed up this process, to make your documentation just sound a lot more professional. If you have any questions about that, always feel free to reach out to me. I am here for you. And also, if this episode has helped you, feel free to share it with a friend. We are not about gatekeeping of information around here. And last announcement, please be sure to be on the lookout for my book that's being published February 6th. Uh, It's called Voices of the 21st Century. And I would be ecstatic if you could just support me on February 6th and buy your cop your buy your Kindle copy for a dollar, buy a hardback if you want. But I mean for sure the Kindle copy for a dollar just just to support. I would really, really appreciate it. And if you want to be reminded of this, definitely join the email list because I will be sending out reminders and asking you for your support there. And you can find out more information about the book to see if you even want to read it in the first place. So with that I will talk to you later, my friend. Thank you for listening to another episode of Social Workers Rise. If you love this episode, be sure to subscribe and text this episode to a friend. If you want more, there are a few ways we can get to know each other and work together. First, definitely subscribe to the Friday resource email list. The link is in the show notes. And that's where you can learn more about the courses I offer, including clinical essentials for the future therapist and the Pulse basics for medical social workers. I'll also be sending out occasional tips and resources and other happenings within the social work industry. And for all your clinical supervision needs, be sure to visit risedirectory.com. This is a national directory of clinical supervisors for social workers, and we also provide free resources that you can use within your own clinical supervision. Lastly, if you have more individualized needs, I do offer coaching, individual consultations, and am available for public speaking engagements for social workers and change makers. Lastly, the boring legal stuff, but very important. The information in this podcast is not meant to be a supplement for therapy, professional advice, or clinical supervision. This content is provided as is solely for informational purposes. It is not legal, health, or safety advice. I am not advising you as a therapist. Organizations should engage their own experts to ensure any adoptive measures are compliant with applicable laws and standards in their jurisdictions. The opinions expressed by individuals or organizations are their own and do not reflect the views or opinions of Social Workers Rise or Catherine Moore. References to specific products or organizations do not constitute any endorsement or recommendations by Social Workers Rise.